This video provides a brief overview of how to fill out the natural resources portion of the Type 2 CE form. Natural resources is the major heading that is inclusive of all of the following topics, protected species and habitat, wetlands and other surface waters, essential fish habitat, flood plains, sole source aquifer, water resources, aquatic preserves, outstanding Florida waters, wild and scenic rivers, and coastal barrier resources. Similar to other sections of the form, you will first choose whether there are significant impacts to natural resources. If you anticipate that there will be significant impacts to any natural resource, the form will display a red information box notifying you that this project cannot proceed as a type 2 CE and you should contact the Office of Environmental Management. If there will not be significant impacts, proceed with filling out the form below. The natural resource evaluation should be added as technical material at the beginning of this section. Technical materials can either be navigated to using the browse function or be selected from within the project file if it is already uploaded. Be sure to provide a name for the technical material or attachment. The NRE only needs to be linked once and not needed in each individual section. For the protected species and habitat section, select either present or not present. If there will be an enhancement, also select the enhancement box. If protected species and habitat are not present, select not present and a standard statement will be included and no summary is needed. If protected species and habitat are present, a detailed summary in the text box must be provided. In this section, a list of potentially occurring species, plants, and or designated critical habitat should be included, as well as effect determinations for each. In the discussion, explain how the effect determination was reached. For example, if a no effect determination was made for a species, explain why. Is it because there is no suitable habitat present? Or maybe the species is not known to occur within the project area. Be sure to include a summary of proposed measures to avoid, minimize, or mitigate adverse effects to protected species and habitat. Include any relevant commitments being made. These commitments will also be listed out at the bottom of the natural resources section. Include dates of field surveys and the dates of coordination concurrence with external agencies in the summary. If there are concurrence letters from the external agencies, they should be attached to the Type 2 CE. Other attachments relevant to protected species and habitat section include, but are not limited to, maps showing wildlife observations, habitat maps, coordination letters, and any species protection measures if applicable. If programmatic key effect determinations were used to obtain ESA concurrence, be sure to summarize the use of the key in this section. The key with the highlighted pathway should be attached to the Type 2 CE. Examples of supporting technical materials that are maintained in the project file include the NRE or tech memos and other agency correspondence. Be sure to state that the NRE or tech memo is included in the project file. When ESA consultation cannot be completed during the PD&E phase, the Type 2 CE should include a summary of the consultation to date, the reasons why it cannot be completed, documentation that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and our National Marines Fishery Service agree to complete consultation prior to construction, and any other information that may provide reasonable assurance that the requirements will be fulfilled. The next topic in the form is wetlands and other surface waters. Similarly, you must pick whether wetlands or other surface waters are present or not, and if there is an enhancement. A summary is only required when wetlands or other surface waters are present. The summary needs to include a discussion of survey methodology description of wetland impacts, including quantification of functional loss, compensatory mitigation options, and the wetlands finding. The wetlands filing finding must refer to Executive Order 11990 and include the rationale used to reach the determination that the proposed project 
will not have significant short-term or long-term adverse impacts to wetlands. There is no practicable alternative to construction in wetlands and measures have been taken to minimize harm to wetlands. Be sure to include a summary of the proposed measures to avoid, minimize, or mitigate adverse effects to wetlands and or other surface waters. If mitigation is required or anticipated for this project, you must include the mitigation options considered in the Wetland Mitigation Standard Statement found in Part 2, Chapter 9 of the PD&E Manual, which is linked above. Summarize any coordination with external agencies. Attachments supporting the wetlands and other surface waters section include maps depicting wetlands and anticipated impacts. Technical materials could include additional correspondence with external agencies and UMAM forms, unless they have already been provided in the NRE. As a reminder, the NRE is linked above at the beginning of this section and does not need to be provided here. The final section we will go over in this video is the essential fish habitat section. Again, you must select either present or not present and check if there is an enhancement. If EFH is present, an additional selection must be made and you must select whether there will be an adverse effect or no adverse effect. The appropriate standard statement will populate depending upon the option you select. For either option, a detailed summary of EFH involvement and consultation must be provided. Be sure to include a summary of proposed measures to avoid, minimize, or mitigate adverse effects to EFH and any relevant commitments. Include FDOT's determination regarding the potential adverse effects on the project to EFH. The determinations are minimal, more than minimal, but less than substantial or substantial. The date of correspondence from the National Marine Fisheries Service should be included. Be sure to include any EFH related commitments made in this section. When EFH consultation cannot be completed during the PD&E phase, the Type 2 CE should include a summary of the consultation to date, the reasons why it cannot be completed, documentation that the National Marine Fisheries Service agrees to complete consultation prior to construction, and any other information that may be provide reasonable assurance that the requirements will be fulfilled. Attachments relevant to EFH include concurrence letters from NIMPS and any maps showing EFH boundaries. Other correspondence from NIMPS can be added to the file as technical materials. Skipping down to the bottom of the page to the commitment section, you will find the appropriate place to list the natural resources commitments required for your project. For guidance on commitments, please see Part 2, Chapter 22 of the PD&E Manual. Please contact OEM if you have any questions about how to fill out these sections of the Type 2 CE form.